What's this? What's this? Adventure is abound. What's this? Excitement all around. What's this? Coming from Dark Souls to experience this, a challenge I will not miss. What's this? What's this? What's this? The grace of gold I go. What's this? I travel to and fro. What's this? A world is filled with chaos and magic. God's death is so so tragic. Why does this make me so ecstatic? What is this? Thousands of people experiencing dread, discovering a steeple of Muriel, a village of potheads. Boggart in the leak, maybe Princess Ronnie instead. Will the tarnished only see it if they forged on the head? A look up here, a cosmic looking rock, a boss, how freakishly eldritch, inspired. A great stone and iron castle resting atop an active molten fire. What's this? What's this? Up there, Karia Manor. And there, magic artillery. But why? The creepy crawly hands and bright blue magic men and even spooky magic casting post women. Well, the lens between us, but we love it so much fun. It's so much fun. Oh, can't they see it just like this? The fuck's this? Oh no. What now? The bad and complaining. But look, no skill is happening. No effort. No build to try and make and win or see it. Only petty little complaints inside there. <sighs> Fuck's this! The whole playthroughs are all missing and the problems can't be found. But in the reviews it says it's too difficult all around. But then without any effort I fear they cannot share the great once in a lifetime experience everywhere. The sights, the sounds, they're everywhere and all around. It's never been so grand before. This game is feature complete and filled right up. I simply do not understand this stuff. Cannot know, I do not know. I do not know how you don't. I got to know, I've got to know what these hot takes that they have formed. Fuck is this? Easy mode? Hmm. Hey, hey, people. Breaker here. There are plenty of classes to play in Elden Ring, but the matter of fact is you can build your own class. However, because you lack the intelligence, we're going to run Astrologer. Now your character's appearance and name are very important, so be sure that they reflect you and you alone. We have designed ours after a game journalist. And that's right. This guide is going to insult anybody and everybody who has no capabilities, including, but not limited to, um, th 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 that guy. Right there. Him. Fucking idiot. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to- OH SHIT! Now that you're up, you're going to want to go ahead and head immediately to your right, down to the tutorial, so you can finally learn how to play the game. Of course, we're just going to use magic every fucking step of the way. Except these guys were the first step. Your first boss. This should be very, very difficult. But don't worry. Now, you can go out into the free world and acquire the things we need to make easy mode a reality. See this white man over here? Don't kill him. I mean it. Do not pull a quantum TV. See this Santa looking motherfucker? Don't kill him. Acquire a crafting kit. Make your way down the road with the friendly denizens all the way to this grace over yonder. Upon sitting you will find the first woman capable of even talking to you. An absolute fucking loser. Offer you an accord. Oh fuck yeah! This bitch fucking lied to me. Now that you have Torrent, head back to Kali and speak to Ronnie. She will grant you dogs. Several. They will be very useful. You may be deceived to think she's a real woman, but she's actually just a doll. And much like a white girl, she seems to have a weird obsession with fucking horses. To the west of where you got Torrent just up the hill, we can acquire the first of our many golden seeds. Ah yes, the real gatekeeper of the Elden Ring community. But we're not gonna fight him. Not yet. We'll be back. 
Head straight east past the ruins where you got Torrent, and just hop over here to acquire the first of our ten somber stones to acquire the weapon of mass destruction. Just north of here, we can also acquire a golden chicken leg that'll increase rune gain. This will be very important for later. Head south and up these ruins in order to acquire the Royal House Scroll. This will give us carry and slicer for later. As we make our way across Murder Bridge, we're going to go ahead and acquire a Stone Sword Key. This is going to be one of many, and there should be plenty along the way for us. Next, we head to this carriage to acquire ourselves a Morning Star. This is going to be an insanely useful item for something later. What you might ask? Why? It's a Seeger Musket Tool. For later. We then go up to the very first of many towers, and kill ourselves a couple fucking tortoises, including this invisible one, just so that we can acquire our first of few memory stones. You're gonna need more slots, baby. Heading further south, with the archer shooting out our asshole, we're gonna acquire the second of many golden seeds. And even further down, on the beach where these uh, jelly fucks are, we're gonna acquire our second somber stone. We are now two out of ten already. We're going along greatly. Heading west of the grace where the merchant was, just to the north of where we got the uh, golden seed and stone, we can get our first of many sacred tiers. This will help us upgrade our flasks. And we can also grab this grace with another sacred tier to the further north. And guess what? That's not all. We're gonna go ahead and head through these tomb sword ruins to get some Nicola lilies. These will be useful for later. But also, a sacred tier in a church just not far away. Now we head to a merchant to the very far south, sell a couple runes, and acquire ourselves a lantern so that we can see in dark environments. I mean, I can see pretty fine, but you might not be able to, because you haven't eaten your fucking carrots. Yeah, baby. North, we can acquire the Fervor Cookbook. This has the recipe for the Sleep Pot, a very useful tool that we can use on a boss later. Next, we grab our Wondrous Physic, and another Sacred Tear. The physic will be insanely useful, as our build relies heavily upon one thing. Next we go to the fort to the east. We can acquire a golden seed and the uh, half of the Dectus Medallion. This half of the Dectus Medallion is the easiest to get, with the second half being not that much harder. We then head north outside of the physic temple, and go up these fucking ramps, so that we can head all the way to Caelid. Here's the path. Be sure to grab anything and everything in your way. Mushrooms, lilies, children, runes, the usual. Next we enter the shack on the right to acquire some preserving boluses. This will be useful for getting rid of Scarlet Rot, because you have no skill. At a grace just south of the ruins, we acquire this and then head down into the swamp below to get ourselves the first staff that we're going to be using temporarily, the meteorite staff. As an S scaling and it's very strong, Subsequently, just to the east, down a little bit of steps, you can find the Rock Sling, a very useful spell that will help us against a couple bosses, and will be uh, utterly useless right after. Following the north wall towards the east, we end up going down to Crevasse to acquire ourselves Somberstone 5. Wait, what about 2 and 3? We'll get them later. Next we head to the Celiander Stair Grace. Go ahead and activate it because we're going to be here for a bit. And upon sitting down, you'll realize that you fucked up. There is no escaping her. She's everywhere. She will find you. And she will take you to the round table hold. Like me. Now we head up to the town of Celia. And grab ourselves the... The fucking... I don't know what number this is. Uh, another golden seat? Whatever the fuck. Light these goddamn torches. There's one here, and also we can get the uh, Rave Staff of Laws. We can get my fucking horse in. The Great Staff of Loss. That's right. It's on that balcony just right there. You see it? I see it. Let's go ahead and grab it. Fucking delicious. This will be the best tool we have. Light another flame. Grab this fucking stone sword key. It's free. I mean, we need them. And then light this other flame. Head back down and go up these steps again to find the greatest spell in existence. That's right. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. It's okay, we're good. Next, we go north up the town of Celia. And make sure that we don't get run over by these fuck fucking balls. And uh, now we head all the way over here to the chapel where Millicent is. But then we go left and go to the skull and find ourselves another stone sword key right on top of that bitch. That's right.
Bet you didn't even know there was shit up here. Now we head to Fort Faroth, acquiring this grace and ignoring the dragon. D don't worry, we'll, we'll be back for it later. We just have to get a few things. Speed your sorry little ass through the Fort Faroth and uh, go ahead and grab a couple of items. The other half of the Dectus Medallion to start, and then, quite literally, anything else the fuck you want in this place. I mean, you don't have any runes, what the fuck is there to lose? Of course, there is the Radagon Sorceal here, granting plus 5 to all physical attributes, which is nice, but, you know, might as well grab it. Heading north all the way to the Minor Ur Tree, we could take a Spirit Spring down. Upon landing, we'll be capable of heading around to the right and avoiding the boss, heading all the way up to this grave site for some free runes. Using the Spirit Spring below, we can use it to hop on top of the roof to get another spell slot from the tower. Hooking on the right side after we cross the bridge in front of that tower, we can go all the way to the center of this peninsula, grabbing this other golden seed that we can use, and subsequently grabbing a couple more items. Following your way up to the right, we can avoid the black blade. Heading straight past the bestial sanctum to the cliffside, we can find our way down, down below the bestial sanctum what's down here you might ask why a dagger that we're going to use temporarily and a talisman that we're going to use almost for the entire game follow these sick horse tricks to get your ass down there without taking too much damage or any at all the cicada is a strength dagger we're not going to be using it for anything other than quick step and we can also grab the Physical Resistance Talisman. This will greatly save us in situations that would normally get us killed. Now, heading west past the dragon, we're going to head to the Caelan Divine Tower. At the base of it, we can find a Somberstone 9, one of the more rare ones, so conveniently located. And just up the hill and around the corner, we can find a Scarab holding Somberstone 8, a very convenient location to get a plus 9 fucking weapon. Get the fuck off the edge, you little shit. Next, we're gonna jump across the Divine Tower, kill this enemy so that way we can get up to the ladder safely. Follow this path in order to get a free Newman rune, a rune that will grant us 12,500 runes upon use. Heading around the tower over here, and then dropping down this little ledge on the back. Don't worry, you won't die, even if you fall down right here. There you go, free new road. Heading back to the first step, we're going to go around behind and use the Spirit Spring. That way we can go ahead and grab ourselves another chicken leg. This will give us a little more runes than before. But don't worry, there will be a merchant in the future that we go to, who will grant us even more. Next, we're going to go ahead and head around Stormvale. If you take this path on screen, you'll find it's actually quite easy. And we're going to head to a very, very fun location. A location everybody knows. Fuck! Welcome to Liernia. Just down this hill and over here by Tops, we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves another sacred deer. Turning around, we're going to go ahead and head to the graveyard just to the north. To grab ourselves the Academy Scroll. This has a swift glintstone shard. We're also going to grab another golden seed in the middle of the lakes. If you don't know where the maps are, fight them out yourself. 
We then head to the Albanark village located underneath the plateau. We're going to go ahead and kill some enemies here, but we're going to more importantly grab ourselves the Hailing Tree Medallion. Don't worry, we're not going to fucking fight Melania. Now we head to the Church of Vows to this big dog, grant him both these scrolls, and get ourselves to six spells using the Numen Rune. Equip the following spells on screen. Focus your intelligence as high as you can get it. And equip all of these items. Going to this Grace and Kaelid, we're going to head straight east to the cliffside. Upon reaching the cliff, we're going to follow it down until we can get on top of these tree branches that are protruding, heading inside of this secret cave. Allocate your flasks accordingly so that you'll have more mana for the fight. Using the cicada, we can quick step through the fucking bullshit in order to prevent ourselves from getting scarlet rotted. But in case you did, we got the pustules from earlier. Use a lantern for light and follow the path shown on screen. Sprinting past every single enemy and dodging the following projectiles from the two mages up here like so. You can jump up here and head into the boss fog right away. Upon entering, immediately summon the dogs and then fill up on mana and quickly carry and slice the enemy to the left. Upon running out of stamina, run the fuck away as far as you can. And being the wussy that we are, throw all your spells at the one we just hit. And try to dodge those, I guess, somehow. With the first one down, now we can divert our attention, filling up on health and mana in case you lost any, and fucking him up. Upon killing him, we acquire the Great Talisman that will allow us to get loads of money. Immediately head the fuck back to Grail's Dragon Barrow. Equip chicken on your more favorite slot. And then, heading north, we can acquire Great Runes. Don't forget the secret ones before. Find your favorite spot, and go fucking ham. dump every single fucking rune you got right into intelligence. Change the time of day to night and find the night cavalry men. You can usually get them to fall off the edge if you just go the fu- Oh, Jesus fuck! Okay, well, may maybe if you just stand- No, okay, well- Well, what if we- Okay, what if I just shoot the shit out of him? Is that a good way, or- Alright, well, I- I mean, I can- Okay, how about the other side? Alright, well, back on the branch. Maybe he'll just run himself off this time, right? He's got it, right? He's got... Okay, well, he's on the ledge. I can... If I just do this and then... Alright, well... You... Okay, that worked. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, alright. Again, upon sending it to Grace, pump everything into intelligence. Don't worry about anything else right now. Be sure to equip the nightclub spell. Nox Maidens aren't far from the town of Celia itself. In fact, they're just right beside the damn thing. 
following where you found the uh, golden seed up here, head on down, and just go a little bit west by northwest, and you can find the gate right here. These are an essential boss to easy mode, but they're very easy themselves. Go ahead and summon your dogs, find your favorite spot. Using the Meteor Staff, we're going to hold and charge Night Comet. Avoid their attacks as much as possible, typically letting the dogs take aggro, you can find yourself a very safe spot away from them, casting from far distances to do a shit ton of damage. Defeating them, we can gain access to the Weapon of the Gods, the Sassaglin Stone Staff. Behold its beauty. Going back to Lear near the lakes and heading out from the uh, outside, we can go ahead and grab the key to go inside of the actual school. We're going to use it for quite a bit of things later. However, we're not going to go just yet. Heading straight east of where we got the key, we can find this here cave. Very convenient for another essential thing for easy mode. The Crystallians are actually easier than the cave that they're in, as there's a shit ton of mages with a fucking problem. Just spread past and pull as much as you fucking can, finding your way through, and hopefully you'll get there uh, relatively unscathed. But for the most part, the bosses are rather simple. Utilizing Rock Sling and our dogs, we're gonna go ahead and beat the fuck down. With enough Rock Slings, you can break their poise, as it does a really high amount of poise damage. As you can see, an easy defeat. At the top of this lift, we're going to go ahead and acquire ourselves the Terra Magica spell. A very, very useful spell. North by Northeast, we're going to find ourselves another tower. Killing these three turtles in these three locations shown on screen, you can get yourself another memory stone. We're going to need a decent few spell slots in order to tackle every piece of content that we want to. Just east of where we got the memory stone, we can find a body sitting on a chair with a somber stone 3. Subsequently, just north, on another body in a chair, secluded in this little area right here, we can find Somberstone 4, immediately allowing us to get a Lusat's Glintstone Staff 2 plus 4 already. Next, we're going to take a little detour to see off our river well. Grabbing every little thing in your way, because you never know if it's going to be useful or not, we're going to go ahead and acquire the first item for our spirit summon, as we're not going to be sticking to wolves. The Ghost Glove Wart 1. Subsequently, just up the path, we can find Ghost Glove Wart 2, right where the map would be. And just up the spirit spring to the east, where the map shows it, we can find Ghost Glove Wart 3.
And finally, if we go up this ruin right here in the center of screen, we can take this teleporter that'll allow us to find America's Scar Seal and Ghost Glove War 4. Now we can jump off this ledge over here and acquire yet another golden seed. And subsequently, right after grabbing this golden seed, you can turn around, jump on this ledge right here, make your way down, hop off, and grab yourself another stone sword key. Very convenient. Using the academy key, we can go all the way into the academy, grab this grace, and then head down this path over here to find the merchant that will sell us the Twin Imp Ashes. We're going to actually use this later for a very important item. Exiting the academy on the other side, we can go ahead and find this here, Sacred Tear. And if we... Fucking frenzy here, holy shit. Another Sacred Tear. Oh my god! That's what you get, bitch. Using the Dectus Medallion, we're gonna go ahead and head straight up to Alta's Plateau. Following this area to the, uh, what, the fucking north or whatever the hell? We can, like, kind of kill this boss down here. Maggie, I think her name is. I don't know, I don't really care. You can kill her if you want. She drops the ruin, the, uh, not ruin, the ritual sword. Tell I don't know. She's not necessary. You don't really need her. Hopping off the ledge, however, we can grab this here grace and this golden seed. We'll be coming back to this grace later in order to traverse easier. However, we're going to head east and up the path, acquiring a golden seed located here and a sacred tier located here. Subsequently, we're going to go on this bridge, take this path all the way over across the bridge, and then head down and around to grab this grace. We're now heading into Mount Gelmir. We're only here really for a couple of items, at least temporarily. Climb up this, uh, long fucking ladder. Acquiring this grace, however, we can go into this graveyard, raid it, and also subsequently get a Somberstone 6. That's right. We can already use a plus 6 Lestat's Glenstone Staff. Heading back to the round table. What the fuck is going? Oh, fucking Jesus. Okay, yeah, I'm... Uh, oh, Jesus, fuck. Oh, God. Stop, no, wait, no, hold on. Hold the fuck on. Fuck, 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 fuck. Why are you running? Why are you running? Head to our favorite blacksmith and upgrade your shit to plus six. Subsequently, sell any runes that you've acquired along your way. We're going to use them in order to level up our strength to ten and our vigor up a little bit. Head back to Kali and acquire yourself three Cracked Pots. We can use these to make Sleep Pots. This will be very useful for the next boss. Heading down Mount Gilmir, we can go ahead and acquire this Golden Seed. Very free, very easy. Going underneath the bridge to go into the keep, we're going to go ahead and fight our next boss. The Ulcerated Tree Spirit is a giant, massive fucking hitbox of pain. We're going to go ahead and use the tree to dance around it. Subsequently, we can also utilize some of the geometry to make it despawn back to its original location, being capable of abusing its AI even further and hitting it for free.
when it does despawn and go back, you'll notice because it'll actually lose its health bar down the bottom. Also, it'll be standing still when you go back to it. You can usually get a good charge shot off and two extra shots off before running away. Sometimes when it despawns, you can actually hear a noise that it makes right here. This is a great indicator to know that it has reset its AI. As you can see, as long as you fuck around a tree with it and hit it a few times here and there, it's an easy, easy win for a very, very essential item. Too easy. Heading back to the earlier grace in the Altus Plateau, we're going to go ahead and head past the Mariner to get this grace down here in the Seathwater Terminus. And then we're going to... What the fuck? Wait. What the... What the actual fuck is going on? We're now on our way to acquire another golden seed in the Seathwater Terminus. But we're also on our way to acquire something very, very special. Heading through the Seathwater Terminus all the way to the fort over here. And then going right past this magma worm. Snaking our way around the ravines and monkeys. We can find yet another grace. This will be used as a backup in case you die, but going through the Hermit Village, we can find Maggie. We're not going to encounter her and fight her just yet, we're just going to go right through her and go straight for the grace behind her, because the important man himself is right there. Acquire your grace and talk to the man, the myth, Azur. Actually, we're going to go ahead and turn around and kill Maggie because she actually has a uh, memory stone. So just cast on her better than she can cast on you. Which is very easy because you've got Night Comet and a lot of fucking intelligence. You can also head to the Twin Maiden's Husk and buy another memory stone, which, you know, that'll work. Go ahead and complete Rodrigo's quest line really quick. Then go to Altus Plateau. We're going to go ahead and head uh, down to here, grabbing another golden seed near this minor archery. This next section is optional. Heading up the windmill village, we can find a boss. If you put this inside your physic, we can test it out. Go ahead and throw a sleeping pod at him. He might dodge it, so be careful about your inventory. And when he's asleep, set up Terra Magica. Drink your physic for infinite mana. And just hold down Kamenazer and watch the damage. Alright, fucking dodge. F -f Finish him off. Heading towards the city from the side of the village, we can go ahead and acquire ourselves another golden seed. We're also going to head straight to the city as fast as we can, as there's a few more golden seeds on the inner walls. Be sure to dodge these trebuchets and not get hit by them. Now that we're inside the city uh, limits, we're going to go ahead and avoid the middle road here and grab this grace. Then we're going to go ahead and head to these little trees and grab a double helping of golden seeds. Free as fuck. Head down the left side in order to avoid another boss and grab two more golden seeds. Free as fuck. 
With our infinite power, we can get another golden seed from an ulcerated tree spirit. But because we're insanely strong, it won't be a problem. Okay, ignore that. Um, go ahead and set up Terra Magica. Drink your physic. And cast Comet Azure at your leisure. And watch the damage go. Easy mode. Heading back into the Frenzy Flame Village with the Flaming Tower of Death, we're going to head to this Erd Tree, hop on down here, and uh, set up to kill this Erd Tree Avatar, as it has a Crystal Crack here we'll actually need. Just make sure you do a shit ton of damage to it, because, you know, that's the good way to do things. Just like that. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Okay. She's fucking fuck. Wait. 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 Now we head into the Volcano Manor, as the only somber stone we're missing right now is the plus 10 and the plus 7. Go ahead and talk to Tanith in order to fire her drawing room key. Open up the door immediately to your right down the hall. And uh, see that painting in the corner there? Yeah, fuck it up. Just, just jump into that bitch. Roll, whatever. Yeah, just do that. Then head around the corner, go through the hallways, and get to this grace. Head through the entire village back here until you reach the certain point where you can get to this little lift. No problem. Stealth's my specialty. Go ahead and fuck up this guy up here and lower the drawbridge in case you die. But you probably won't, as you already have everything you need to kill Fatty. Upon entering the boss arena, we're gonna ready a sleep pot and put this bitch to sleep. This will allow us to set up Terra Magica, drink our physic, and go to town. Now we head up the lift and uh, navigate the Volcano Manor as quickly as we can. If you want to use your runes to level up, feel free to. Navigate your way through the Volcano Manor, making sure that you go ahead and head up these steps and go around to this specific door. Using our Stone Sword keys that we've acquired, we can unlock it. Upon reaching this part, drop down to the right and immediately take this little path that is hidden away. Using the safety of these drop downs, we can actually use them as an advantage to kill the enemies below so that they can't fuck us up. Heading up the steps up here to where the Iron Maiden is, we can grab. Immediately head back to the round table and upgrade that shit as fast as possible. Oh yeah, now we're gaming. We're now gonna go over to our friend Patches, located right here in Limgrave. Ah, oh, fuck. ほう、向かってくるのか。近づかなきゃ、てめえをぶちのめせないんでな。ほうほう。では十分近づくがよい。Once we enter Murkwater Cave, we're going to go ahead and find our little boss man, Patches. He's rather easy, and all you have to do is raid his little uh, pantaloons. Upon fighting him, hit him until he surrenders. Head back to the Grace and reset the area, and then go towards him, only to realize that you entered Volcano Manor so he's not fucking here. Teleport to Volcano Manor and head towards the entrance and you'll find him near the entryway. Just sitting there all chillin'. Talk to him and grab all three of the chicken legs. Free runes. After everything, we're finally ready to fight.
It's like I was here 20 minutes ago or something. Oh well. Summon the docks and uh, summon Terra Magica and then um, dodge his shit and fuck him up. I fucking told you it'd be back, bitch. Ever have a problem with this specific storm all night when you're locked in a room? Well, now he's no problem. Now we fight our next boss. God Dick the Grafted. Same as before, summon dogs, Terra Magica, drink pot. Uh, yeah, Common Azure. I'm like, this, this is easy mode, guys. This is it. This is what it looks like. You can do this. I am the Lord. Now that we've done that, head back to Limgrave and talk to Vare, because he's going to be a very important part to our quest. Go back to the round table hold and talk to the finger reader. You can go ahead and sell Godric's rune, we'll never need it, and sell all your other runes because we're actually going to utilize them right now. Level up your vigor and then head back to Vare. You'll find that he's gone and you'll get a new emote, but then he'll be over in Liernia the Lakes if you find him to the far west of the Blood Chapel. This over here is a grace. This is a very easy access to Vare. This over here is Vare. Vari's questline is actually rather easy, because up to this point, we actually have everything we need to complete it within minutes. Upon acquiring the Bloody Fingers, head to this specific location on the map where this grace is, and we're going to go to these ruins over here. Find the red summon sign on the ground, clear the dogs, and we're going to go ahead and invade an NPC that was added to the game in order to complete this quest offline. Kill this NPC or invade him three times or so in order to actually complete this part of Arya's questline. Heading back to him, you'll talk to him and he'll ask if you want to join. Accept it, and then he'll give you this cloth. We're just going to very easily head to where we fought Vike and just grab a bit from her. Head back to Vare and get yourself. Once you've been fingered so hard that you make your ass bleed, go ahead and talk to him again to grab this metal. Use it immediately in front of his face. You are now in an endgame area. Go ahead and grab this little here, uh, Glyph's Glyphort, Glyph's Glyphort 9. Grab this grace just up the steps, past the map that you can get. Run your ass through the Mogwin's palace, as we're going to go ahead and kill Mogwin, but we need to prepare a few things first. Explore around if you wish. There's actually a free stone sword key just around the corner on the right. Head through the area like so. You'll find a golden item right here. This is a lord's room, free runes. And then to the right, you'll find a ghost club or 10. That is 9 and 10 prepared. All we have left is 5, 6, and 7, and 8. Then head up to this grace over yonder. Go ahead and set up Terra Magica, drink some potions, and clear the area. In this chest is a somber stone 10. Head back and upgrade your Lissette's Glintstone staff immediately. Now, we're going to head back to the area of the lakes and go into the school. Run through like a little bitch and kill anything that really irritates you. Like, uh, I don't know, how about a dog? Yeah, that one right there. Make your way up this little lift and head inside the schoolhouse classroom. We're going to grab ourselves a few items. Heading to the left of the grace, you can actually jump off this ledge right here to acquire yourself a glintstone crown. This crown will give you a plus three to intelligence, but take away a little bit of health. This won't be the primary helmet we'll use, but we can use it for right now. Head up the steps past all the mages and uh, hug this left side to open this bookshelf. Ladder, jump over this here ledge and grab yourself the Graven Talisman. 
This grants a plus four to sorceries. This is nothing to scoff at, as the numbers will get exponential. Fucking pot, get out of my fucking way. Shit. What the dog doing? Becoming Michael Vick, we summon our own dogs to fight this dog. But like a real Pokemon trainer, we run away. Cheering our dogs from the sidelines with uh, massive amounts of fucking sorcery damage, we kill this dog. You might have thought we were here with the memory stone, but in actuality, we're gonna head out here, hook a right around here, jump over this railing, climb up the ladder, and acquire ourselves a legendary talisman. Going back outside, we can go up this left area, up this rubble, over this railing, over this railing, down this roof, up this ladder, and then uh, across here, down that roof, down that roof, down that roof, down, roof, down here, and then down the uh, other roof over here. We can jump to the right and kill this specific crab for some extra drip. So I heard tale of this stupid motherfucker that lives at the top of this area. Um, I'm just gonna go up there and see what this fuck this is about. I, I'm not too certain, but you know, why not? He's probably fucking, I don't know, free runes or whatever. Who, who cares? What the fuck is that? It, is that supposed to be a modern art piece? What am I looking at? Is it- it's bleeding? What the fuck? Okay, that's just- that's just a little too much fucking blood, dude. What, what is this supposed to fucking be, dude? Oh, 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 okay. Yeah, sure. Just- just Okay. Yeah. Fuck are you? Dearest, Wait, aren't you guys related? What the actual shit? What the fuck? I've come to make an announcement. Mobin's a creepy ass motherfucker. Took Miggle up from the fucking Hailing Tree. That's right, he grabbed him with his horny, wrinkled hands and stole my fucking DLC. And he said his love for him was this big. And I said that's disgusting. So I'm making a call out post to my Elden.com. Baldwin, you've got a small dick. It's the size of this ruined fragment, except way smaller. And guess what? Here's what my staff looks like. That's right, baby. One point. No horns, no wrinkles, look at that, it looks like a crystal ball. He fucked my DLC, so now guess what, I'm gonna fuck his face. That's right, this is what you get, my super laser piss. Except I'm not gonna piss on his face, I'm gonna go lower. I'm pissing on his balls. How do you like that, America? I pissed on his balls, you idiot. You have 24 hours to like and subscribe to this fucking shit. Now get the fuck out of my sight before I piss on you too. Ah, I see it now. A dynasty. Epstein. What the fuck is... Who, what? What the fuck is Epstein? What the fuck? What the actual fuck? <sighs> All my DLC Miyazaki. I'll be back. Well, at least not rich as shit. That's his free levels. Next step, Radon. We're gonna acquire ourselves a friend and we're gonna upgrade them to plus 10 ASAP. But first, we gotta take out Big Man himself. As you can see, with the plus 10, it's easy. 
After the star falls from beating Radon, we go ahead and head down this little hole that the star crash caused, entering Nokron, the Eternal City. Making our way across the rooftops, heading all the way down into the city, we find the boss fog. Unequip absolutely fucking every weapon in our piece, so you can fight mano a mano with yours truly. But of course we're wussy, so we're just gonna re-equip it and just kill it faster, cause fuck it. Cycling around the left side, jumping off onto these roofs, we can actually make our way into the city in order to acquire ourselves our best friend. That's right. Who better a friend than us? Oh shit, a new shirt. Open the chest and acquire the best summon of the fucking game. Now we're actually going to head into the city of Landell, and the only way through is past this fucker. We can just blast his ass to oblivion. Very challenging, much fun. Next we head to the west of the Altus Plateau, grabbing the Ghost Club for plus 5 in the script. If you follow along on screen, you can see exactly where to go. Down this lift. Through this passageway, past these two rodents. Two more rodents in this room. Making your way down this tight corridor into this little area, you can- Oh, fucking Jesus. You can actually see the Ghost Club Fort from here, if you get all this fucking slime. It's actually just straight in the center. Now we go to Mount Gelmir, where we got Common Azur. There's another crypt that'll give us Ghost Club Fort plus seven. This one's actually pretty early in the crypt. Follow what you see on screen, you can get there rather safely. Actually, you know what? Don't do what I did right here. This is stupid. Jump across this part of the lava right here and get inside and all the way up. these two hooligans is Ghost Clover 7. Ghost Clover 8 is actually back in Mogan's area, right about here. 
In case you don't know where that might be, it's actually south of where you spawn when you use the talisman. And upon getting it, we can go all the way back to Rodrika and get our shit level to plus 10. Upgrade Mimic Tier all the way to max. Head inside Landell and fuck shit up. Because now, you just unlocked easy mode. the other half of the Haley Tree Medallion, now that we're all the way up here because we defeated the other bosses, and we're going to get ourselves a cool talisman. Using the same lift that we used to get up there, we're going to use it with the secret medallion to go down into here, chopping down this path here, which is invisible, and killing the final boss in this area, which is just us again. Get dripped out of your gourd. Much like Celium, go ahead and light these candles. Except instead of three, there's now four. Head down to the hailing tree and fight this horse bitch in order to get her spell. This spell is specifically useful against the final boss. Going all the way down the ladder here in the hailing tree, we can actually uh, make our way through and get another very, very useful item. Making our way across these branches in the drainage channel and heading up on top of the chapel and killing the enemies down below, we can acquire a very, very useful talisman. back to the Consecrated Snowfield, we're going to go ahead and do this little tower puzzle. In order to solve the puzzle, you need to summon the imps that we purchased from the merchant earlier. In order to prevent them from dying instantaneously, we're going to assist them before summoning them. Heading all the way to the top, you can get the Graven Mass Talisman. This is going to be my setup for pretty much the rest of the game. Ahead are just going to be some fucking examples of just how easy this game becomes once you actually have this much fucking power. Fire Giant? Fucking easy. Just Night Comet is fucking shits. What the fuck? Cut up his shins again, cut up his fucking toes, shoot him with the fucking mouth, shoot him with the leg. With our vigorous high as it is, we're gonna go ahead and pump mind up a little bit. Welcome to Fire Missoula, baby. There's now another boss in our way. The most favorite boss of everybody on Reddit, the Gods Can Duo. However, if you jump over the railing and head over the right, you can summon a friend for it. This friend is actually very useful, very tanky. And you can use him as a uh, meat shield for the first one while you deal with the other one.
But in order to fight Malakath, we gotta kill his fucking guard. Another reused boss. With the power of magic. back to the blacksmith and sell anything you want. Upgrade things if you feel lit and maybe even level up. How about leveling up your intelligence? intelligence.